What's up, guys, and welcome to episode nine of the Coffee and Beer Fuel General Gaming Podcast. I am your host, Ben Hill, and joining me, as always, is my co-host from the opposite time zone, Mr. Evan Piotrowski. Tell me something, Toad. Is she in another castle waiting to be <laughs> saved? Next to a pipe, oh, I'm gonna dive in into one two underground. Bowser, he hates me, he acts to a chain, he falls into lava, ouch. Into lava, down he goes, into lava, down he goes, in lava, down he goes, a coffee and beer podcast ever. Hi, Ben. Very well sang, sir. <laughs> That's 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 what that's what you get when you tune into the Coffee and Beer podcast. I guess you get you get singing intros. I got uh, I got two more songs banked. I think I just yeah right. So it's been a while. I, I think we should just record all three of them now. Let's just uh, let's just get <laughs> just into get, it. Okay. Right, just, just three it intros. <laughs> right, we could cut them up later. Uh, yeah, I could work out. I'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it going, man? It's been a while. Yeah, yeah it's going okay. Uh, what are you drinking? Uh, I am drinking a, a glass of water because I'm being a nice boy. But also, I've got a very cold uh, instant coffee, which is sort of not looking on the ni- nicer side of life. But it's, oh God. It's, it's it's bearable. How about yourself? What are you drinking? Uh, well, it is 10.30 in the morning, so I'm drinking a beer. No, I'm drinking coffee. Uh, <laughs> right. There's a coffee place uh, in a small shopping district by my house. They kind of okay. do their own coffee, so... This is it's a, a good, ridiculous name. That's the real question. Uh, no, it's just named after the the district, uh, Teramachi. So it's just like Teramachi coffee. Yeah, nothing, nothing special. I'm, hmm. I'm sorry. So how how is it? Is it is it full flavored? Is it is it bitter? Is it is it sweet? It's like, I, I don't know anything about coffee. Uh, man. I drink a lot of it, but I know nothing. So yeah, it, we don't have to, we don't have to do the whole like beer over it for, <laughs> thing about. <laughs> no, it's it's it it's the front a little of your mouth. You know. Yeah, it really opens up. Uh, right, it's it's slightly as, uh, acidic for my taste, but it's it's still good. It's not too heavy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. are you just like whenever you go to this place, you pick out a new coffee every time, then, or is it? Uh yeah. Uh, there's like four or five main blends. Um, it's slightly more expensive than it should be, but I that whole shopping district is it's one of those like shopping districts that usually go out of business the second a big uh supermarket or um department store opens up right and so you you know you go you you've seen them in japan there's just like these old shopping districts and like the logo on the top of it you know it's like it's it's roofed and it's just like um, maybe like a kilometer long straight path was just like lined with pretty much like everything you need and for some reason this shopping district that's right by my house the sanjo shopping district is like alive and well like I'm nah, telling you, there's a, a, no matter what you do, that stuff is on borrowed time. Like it's, there was one of sure, those places, sure. I think in, uh, I think it was in Fujimino. Like when we lived there, there was, there was one of them places like a mile away. But whenever you walk down there, it's like the same, like five type of stores. So it was just like, you know, the flower store and then the, the bakery. And then it was the butchers and then another flower store and then another bakery. <laughs> right. It's like the same thing. And it's just like old people there because they've been going there since the beginning of time. So it's, yeah. yeah it's, well, yeah, one, get, get it while you can. That's, yeah, that's one one good cool. thing is because there's a huge tourist boom in Kyoto right now. Um, there's, as I said, there's there's foreigners, goddamn foreigners. <laughs> but no, there's a. Uh, I would say mostly Eastern European or European is is at least what what I'm hearing when I pass by people. But hmm. they're all, they're they're walking along that that road uh, all the time. But it's nice to have something like that really really close. So like yeah, yeah I get I get like my meat there like dry cleaning there's a small supermarket i go to the like a, a fruit and vegetable shop like i can just nice. i can walk down there and get like everything that i need it's uh and there's some good restaurants and stuff and a bakery yeah it's uh it is weird it's just like uh frozen in time this this k- kilometer long street it's just very yeah. weird oh it's kind of kind of reminds you of the yakuza series i guess yeah it does it does uh yeah if you uh if anyone played uh yeah, because the six, uh, 
the in Onomichi, they had one of those old shopping districts. And Onomichi wow. is kind of like a country side or just like a smaller town. So it really is that mm. frozen in time, like kind of like old, like <laughs> like run down. Uh, right. There's no better way yet. to describe. I know exactly what you mean, and it's not. It's it's actually in like an endearing way. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like there's that whole Japan stuck in the '90s sort of time freeze thing oh, that oh, is going man. on, and it's cool. But it's yeah, it, like to people from the outside, like they don't get it. But yeah, it's it's a thing. I'll uh, I'll take a you you got to see this logo, man. This thing is like mm-hmm. I don't even know what it's like. It could be the '70s or the '80s. It is hideous. <laughs> And it's like it's a, it's in front right right before you walk in. It says like I just think Shan Sanjo Shopping Street or something. I'll take a picture and put it on Twitter. It is awesome. it's it's yeah, good. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I, yeah so uh, I don't know what the day is today. What is it? It is the eighth of February, uh, twenty twenty, and today we're going to be talking about some uh, some dreams, some hopes, and uh, maybe some notes as well. But first, Evan, what have you been playing on? Well. I have been playing Yakuza 7, but of course. of course, I'm going to leave that for the next episode because <gasps> I need to give a game its due that I didn't give in our last episode. So I'm going to retroactively create a, a game, of 29, game of the Year 2019 award called hmm. the best game of 2019 that actually came out in 2019 award. <laughs> right. Okay. And that award goes to remedies control. Ah, oh, okay. So you got around to playing it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, here's another thing that I, I propose, and this only works if we've both played the game or what we think about it in the future, okay. because I think like for this section of the podcast, like I kind of think about what I'm going to say about a game mm-hmm. and like what I'm want to say gets way too long. I would rather say the name of the game and then before I say anything about it, see what you have to say about it before I get into what I'm going to say about it. Because that might add something to whatever this set kind of talking bulletin point stuff that I have in my head. Um, So do you have anything to say about control in general? Like... What no, we no, really. I mean, like, based on. <laughs> All right, move on. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, like, uh, go, go enough, like, what? Because I think we spoke about it when when I played it. Yeah, we did. Longer. We did. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, my my general impression about it was it was a good game. Like, it was really, really well done. It was just, I think that is a game that is designed for next generation. Ironically enough, like talking about like the conversation, which we're probably going to go into in a little bit. But um, yeah, I think I think that game was just made. It, it's it's made for the wrong generation. Like it was. If you played it on a base Xbox uh, One or a base PS4, like not the uh, pro versions of the consoles, like that that game chugged. It was it was it did not it did not hold up very well. Like it was constantly dropping down in frames too. And I'm not like a I'm, I'm not like a frame like snob or anything like that. But it it would literally drop down to like 10 FPS, and it was just pretty much unplayable for sections to the point that I stopped playing it for a little bit. Um, but outside of that, man, the actual game itself is really really good. But the story was really like weird and just crazy sort of i don't know like fan fiction type style like craziness like stuff like it was so out there that was like okay like and you just roll with it after a while like my wife really enjoyed it because she's like she like listens to like a little loaded like youtube videos that are kind of like that and that weird sort of okay i guess but i i i wasn't as much like i like a bit more of a grounded story but I mean, outside, it was just, it was a solid, like, 8, 9 out of 10 for me. It wasn't, it wasn't the best game in the world, but I'm, I'm guessing that you enjoyed it a lot more by the, uh, by the preset of this. Uh, I, I love it. I love okay. pretty much everything about this game. Um, and like you said, I don't, it's probably been patched, and also I have a, I have a pro. Right. Um, that is the difference. Th- anyway. There's no hitching at all. There's one, I, I, sw- I swear, there's one battle where it slowed down a bit. Uh, weirdly enough, if you pa- when, if you pause the game and you unpause it, it goes down to like five frames for a solid two seconds, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. While you're actually playing the game, there's no hitching or anything like that. So I definitely yeah. played it probably at a better time. So I, I on the technical side, I don't have any anything to talk right. about. And and I, I think that was that was the thing and, that yeah. yeah, that was the thing that helped me up. I guess the most like if I didn't have that problem, it would probably be I I would have probably had like a way better 
sort of experience with it overall like in terms of just enjoying the game more it's just because it kept pulling me out of the experience of actually playing the game just yeah with how chuggy it was it was just like oh man like uh, it's 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 really hard to play like it's actually really horrible uh, yeah. to play it on a base console so if you are going to play it i've been waiting for the next gen console so you can like maybe play it in backwards compatibility or something or if you've got a pro or an xbox uh one x and played on that because it's apparently way better experience than them or obviously on pc but yeah right and it was definitely a, a good showcase for like what we can expect for like ray tracing and lighting right in in games because uh although like i've seen someone play this on a proper pc it looks even like way way better mm-hmm. they, they turned it on and off and just some of like the lighting when and reflections look absolutely amazing. So it's not up to that even on the pro, but, uh, Oh dude, I love, like, I love everything about this game. I read every single document I picked up hmm. and I never do that with. Any right, game. I actually remember when I was talking about it, I was like, it's, it's really like reading heavy. And you were like, Oh no, I hate that. Like, I don't yeah, like games do to do that. It. I remember, I remember you mentioning that. So it's kind of interesting that you've sort of changed your mind on that. Yeah, it was kind of a joke with Burkoff where like he loves going into menus and like reading stuff. I'm like, put it in an audio file and let me play it while I'm walking <laughs> around like it's Bioshock. Like, right. I don't have time for this shit. But no, <laughs> I just thought like everything about this game is just so interesting to me. And it's it's funny how taking place in like a concrete and wood paneled like 60s federal government building Mm-hmm. is like a uh, like novel and it feels new because i guess we're just so used to i mean depending on what games you play these like fantastical worlds of like skyrim and, and breath of the wild and stuff actually taking place in like a boring federal government building is cool right. like they get every the design of this place everything down to like the kind of accountant like lamp with like the, yeah. the kind of like the translucent like green header and like the little gold beaded like on and off chain that you pull down the, and um mm. yeah i just i love i love like the everything going on with the astral plane i love the board like the giant upside down triangle that talks to you and it'll it says like you're going to start slash like die and it it it, it man, it's just it's so good and i i love like the little the little stories that you come across with like these kind of interdepartmental like memos and notes and stuff but because the the oldest house it takes place in like it's like connected to this like this other world and things are coming in and out of uh reality and merging at different points like the whole building is like constantly moving and stuff and you like just open someone's office and there's post-it notes everywhere i just feel sorry for like the listeners that have just not played this game yet and <laughs> like what are you, you talking about it's like what the fuck <laughs> what is this game about you know just uh, you can't even try and explain it like how because i remember i think i tried to explain it to you like what the premise was without getting too spoiler like it, even everything that you've just said there is not spoilery whatsoever like it's sort of no. like, yeah like you can sort of expect that like from the get-go because something weird is definitely going on the second that you walk into the oldest house um but yeah, just trying to explain this game as like a coherent sort of video game. Like, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, it, like this happens and this happens and just like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, it just so- it just sounds like you're reading it off like Reddit or something. You know, it sounds like one of them crazy fan fiction things. Yeah, and they kind but of it's, did it's, the it's, whole it's well creepypasta done. thing as well, right? They they take these yeah. uh, these like uh, seemingly uh, uh, what do you want to say? Just kind of like random objects like a coffee mug or like a rubber ducky or a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And because of the resonance with other worlds and stuff, the tree has some like paranatural properties that usually have some sort of dangerous property to them. So they've been like quarantined and like locked down behind like a giant plate glass. And then you like read about like, okay, if you don't stare at this refrigerator and keep eyes on it at all times, like it will kill you. And you're like, what? And you're like looking at these <laughs> yeah. documents and like the objects of power that give you your powers. Um, just some really, really cool situ- situations uh, where you get connected with the astral plane and, and they teach you how to, to, how to use your powers. And a lot of the powers, it's like stuff that are in other games, like dodge and kind of like levitation and the whole oh, yeah. psyops, I mean- like, the tele- get, like I said, like, powers. Uh, pretty much everything in the game is is very next gen as well. Like the whole uh, what we call like defamation, you know, when you 
um, user power and, and like knocks concrete off the walls and, and kicks it up from the ground and when they throw it like just to particle effects by themselves it looks just cool the they, yeah it's beautiful man it's it's really really well done and i think that's that's just why the base consoles just struggle like they just probably shouldn't have released it on them consoles whatsoever it's like yeah so this is a ps4 pro game like don't just don't buy it on this on the base game yeah but I, i'm actually like the more the more people talk about it and like the more i reflect on it like i'm actually really looking forward to going back and playing that game once i've like once the ps5 is out or once the xbox one x series x whatever the fuck it's called is out yeah. <laughs> like eventually like i really look forward to playing this on a console that's like actually capable of playing it properly yeah i mean i don't really want to get into many specifics and what yeah. i've talked about people are like what the hell are, what the hell are you talking about but um I just, I really, I, I love the story. Um, I love uh, Jesse Faden as a character and like the reason she's there. I love the idea of the oldest house. I love the idea of these objects of power and the altered world events and just everything about that. Like I fucking went to the fan Wikipedia thing and I read through like everything mm. and uh, the backstory, her backstory and, and how it connects to what she's doing there and why she's there. It's like, the the way it ended as well was super satisfying and i yeah i, I, I bought enjoy that as well. i bought the digital deluxe edition and there's two dlcs coming out one is the the foundation which is like the foundation is what the oldest house is built on so yeah. it's like even older than the oldest house itself so i'm like and then there's the awe which uh is like the altered world event that they talk about in the games but i'm super looking forward to those dlcs because i platinum the game and i just can't get enough of it like i want to jump back into that world so yeah i love it that's awesome yeah so yeah good. i'm looking forward to getting like the the game of the year edition like next year like i'm sure it's going to come out all oh, there's going to be like a ps5 edition or something it's got it's just got to be sure so, um, i'm probably i'll probably re-pick it up again and play through it again and probably enjoy it five times as much as i did first time around right. it just it, it, it it's hard to explain i mean even now i like i, I still read articles about it. it's like yeah like control really isn't up to scratch on the base console still and it's mm. a shame. Like I, I hate that that happened. But at the same time, like the game probably looked twice as good for you for that reason. You know. So it's yeah, it's yeah. it's a weird balance. But we're at the end of a generation, so I, uh, these things are expected. I mean, no games are running at you know sixty FPS like this this late in the game. So it's it's just how it is. Um, I'm gonna steal something from another podcast that I listen to. It's a film junk podcast. They do okay. They do movie reviews. And they do a five star system, and you can I think you can do two movies a year and give them six out of five, mm, just okay. as a like this was that that good. But you you got to right. save them. You got to save them. Uh, for me, this is a it's almost a six out of five. It's almost there. Right. Um. The one of the only reasons I don't want to I don't want to blow us a, a six out of five. Do you want to do this? Ah, shit. I mean, it's early, man. Like, there's a lot of good games coming out this year. Like, Yeah, I, I will... I'm, I'm okay. going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. Yeah, like, there's a lot of good games coming out this year. Well, so... we, can, we can say, technically, because that game came out last year. Um, Ooh. You know, it could be your 2019 6 out of 5. All right, yeah, I'm going to cheat. Uh, this, this would be... Okay, it would be a 5 out of 5 in 2020 because it's so damn early, but I would, <laughs> right. I would gladly use... A six out of five uh for last year but yeah it's it's that good f- it, 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 for me that's cool man yeah i'm glad you enjoyed it i remember i remember mentioning when i played it i was like everyone's probably gonna like this based on all the conversations that we had about video games and i figured it'll be up your alley and I'm, I'm glad i was right i'm glad that you i'm glad that you've enjoyed it so much yeah it's uh, there's just so many cool mm-hmm. sections in that game and they they do just so they they don't waste the idea Right, like what they're what they're doing with these other worlds and stuff—they don't waste it. They use it to its. It's very, potential. it's very nicely paced. I think that was the good yeah. side of it. Like the, you're you're sort of exposed to information on a regular basis, and it doesn't ever get. It's always like, "Ooh, that's intriguing," sort of thing, and you're carrying on, and it's just there's always little bits, and by the end of it, it's just like this wild ass story is just unfolded, and like, okay, this... yeah. You're like dashing through the air and levitating and throwing. St- it's oh man, it gets so good. But uh, yeah, we have <laughs> talked about it long enough. It's it's great. Uh, what have you been playing? I uh, played a few things this month. I uh, did a bit of traveling at the uh, start of year. So I had 
I uh, bought a few games that were on sale as well because of all the Christmas sales and all that sort of stuff. And there was also some Amazon sales. So I'm going to I'm gonna rush through like three oh, wow. of them real quick. Yeah. Right. So first one that I bought, I bought it for $7. And it was probably the biggest waste of $7 I've ever had in my life, which is uh, <laughs> Anth- I played Anthem. And it's, God, that game is awful. Don't buy it. It's just a complete waste of time. Uh, there's only there's only so much I can say, but the game is very soulless. Um, there's just nothing really going on in it. It's you, it, it's basically a it it's like ten percent of Destiny, and then the rest of it is just it kind of feels like it's set up ready for microtransactions, which probably aren't ever going to come now because the game is sort of bombed and died. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just a weird thing. Like, don't buy it. It it wasn't worth the seven dollars which I put into it. I I played it for like six hours, and I was like, yeah. This is bad. I just, I, I just didn't touch it again. Wow. Uh, two other games which I uh, bought. I bought uh, Shadow of War, and I've been playing this. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to finish this. Um, Shadow of Mordor, which is the first game, Shadow of War, uh, was probably one of my games of the year that year. Like, it oh, it's, it, am- it's a great game. I love it. It's an amazing game. And this isn't, it doesn't do anything worse at all. All they do really is just, it's basically the same game, and then they just added <laughs> 10 times the content to it. But it's so poorly sort of paced and how they expose you to that information. Like going off what we just said about control, um, it's kind of the opposite to that. So they basically throw everything, like all the unlocks you can unlock within the first like five hours of the game. And then they have like these huge maps, which they are in the first game as well. But there's there's like seven of them in this one versus only two of them in the first one, I think. So you're just... Yeah, you're basically just combing through the map and doing the same activities over and over again, and you're not really the story isn't there as as much. Um, there's not there's not much tension apart from like you're just constantly getting hounded by this wraith, which you're sort of bound with as well. But in the first in the first game, like you had a lot of questions about the wraith, you had a lot of questions about your own backstory, how is right. it going to work out, and all that sort of stuff. Doesn't it doesn't really have that tension in this one? It's just like you're just with this wraith, and he's kind of fucking annoying. Actually, after a while, he's just he's just constantly bitching about, oh, when I was your age or whatever, you know. It, it's just like, dude, shut up! Like, let's just kill some orcs. And even that, like, they don't they don't really expand on the game enough, in my opinion. It just feels like one massive major DLC, and it's very bloated, and it doesn't it doesn't hmm. feel like right. It's how kind of, um, it's a shame. How is it? How is that kind of the the castle raiding stuff that they added? How is that? Yeah, Perfect. it's it's good. It's but I I wouldn't say it's any better than the first game. You know, mm. like you're you're still basically using the nemesis system, which is still amazing, by the way. Uh, you're still using the nemesis system to basically take over whole areas. But now each area has this castle or this fort or whatever, and you've got to sort of build an army to take over it and actually have like a final battle. But I like as an experiment to myself just to check. Like the first time that I did it, it was like, all right, that was cool. Like I, I built up this army like within this one sort of area and we took over this fort and it was kind of easy for me doing it because I built up the army so much and I spent so much time within that area. Right. I took over the fort, took over the castle, had a lot of fun doing it. We're like, yeah, this is ours now. And then we went to the next area and it's exactly the same size of no new abilities. Story isn't really progressing. It's just, it's basically another area, the exact same. So it's like, all right, as a test of myself, I'm actually just going to, try and take over this castle without building up the army. Like, let's just go straight into the fight, which you can do if you want. Uh, it's a little bit harder, I guess. But I, I had no problem. I went straight through it. I got to the Weird. final boss, killed him, took over the place, and all the orcs were mine. I was like, okay, what is the point of the nemesis system? Like, you've sort of just killed the foundation which this game is built on. But it's... And that's fine for, like, the first sort of few castles that you take over in the first few areas and the first levels. But when you get to like area six or area five you're just like oh fuck it i I just don't want to do this anymore you know it's it's way too bloated like they just that game could have been half the size like right that's like that's kind of how i'm it's like um mad max was like that there was like two maybe Mm -hmm. one or two like er new areas on the map that you had to take over too many like one or two right. too many that they just just cut it. It's it's essentially copy and pasting the the types of quests and stuff you have to do to in order to exactly. take it over. And that's one reason that I'm worried about. Like, okay, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is cheap enough now, but mm-hmm. I've just heard this game is so big that I don't know. Like, yeah, I still I, I, ha- I have to beat it. Right, I'm not going to play a game for six hours and give up. I have to beat it. So I'm just worried yeah. that it's going to be like six or whatever, five areas too many type of thing. I, I, I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's kind of hard because like I played Odyssey and I've put a lot of time into that game, and I, I enjoyed Odyssey like way more than Shadow of War. It's just it, it's hard to describe like how sort of soulless compared to the first game that it is like it's just not it's just mm. not that great it's 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 really disappointing like if you if you've never played shadow of mordor play shadow of mordor enjoy so it you will love it it's an amazing game uh don't play the second one i guess like that's okay. the other thing like there's a couple of new features like the castle system which is it's okay but it doesn't you know it doesn't really carry the game any further than what it was already being carried anyway mm. uh you can ride dragons in the game there's like smaller dragons that you can fly around on uh, that's an interesting dynamic, but it's not really. It's not, none of it like really contributes to something that like would make you want to spend thirty dollars after playing Shadow of Mordor. Like, there's just nothing really there for me. So, sure, bit of a disappointing um, game for me. Uh, the last game uh, which I played, which I'll talk about real quick, uh, I played The World Ends with You, which uh, the remix version, which is on the Switch, because I needed something to play while we were in the States. Uh, it was on sale. Because uh, I wasn't going to pay fifty dollars for this thing, oh, it's God, a remaster, no. and the the original is like thirty dollars. It's What's... it's annoying. Anyway, but yeah, I picked it up for like fifteen twenty bucks. Um, terrible port. Don't buy it. Uh, play oh. the three DS version. Yeah, it's really awful. It's basically just the iOS version of the game, and they ported it to the Switch. And then the dock version of the game is with motion controls, like with gestures and stuff. Oh man, that sounds bad. Yeah, like. Take that, how bad that sounds, and multiply it by ten. That's how it is actually to play when you're playing in dark mode. And but even even like in undock mode, if you're playing in handheld, which is pretty much all I played in anyway. But the gestures and the swipes and stuff just aren't as responsive as the original 3DS version. And it's just, yeah, man, I've just had such a slew of like disappointing games recently. Like it's all yeah, that sucks. I, I need something awesome to play, you know. But huh. we'll get there. We'll yeah. get there eventually. But yeah, don't don't play the world ends with you on the Switch. But uh, like, dig out your 3DS, uh, play it on that instead, or your DS because that's where it came out on originally. But yeah, just disappointing port. Uh, nothing really great about it. it. Looks pretty, but that's about yeah. it. Like it doesn't play that great. Uh, these uh these games, man, they're just um they're making you wonder why you play anything new. Just you got to go back to uh tap into your your inner retro vin. You're like, why do I even play new games? I mean, you're joking about classics. you're joking about this, but I'm <laughs> at the moment like I, I'm not going to talk about them right now. But I'm I'm playing through Final Fantasy VII because I want to sort of get a good reference point for when that does come out, sort of thing. I'm um, getting more excited about that game than I thought I was going to. Yeah, but it's still like you know, like what the content which is in the uh, the remake is actually only like five hours of the original game. Um, that right, worries the shit out of me, you know. I yeah, I know that you said that. That's annoying. Yeah, they it it's not Final Fantasy VII remake part one. They mm-hmm. did not add a part one. Yeah, to that, that, which, that is, which is really really disappointing. gets me. You want to hear something that's even more annoying? So, uh, I go to the, I, I guess they're pre order. I guess it would be reserve. You reserve a copy. Uh, I go to a brick and mortar store uh, in mm-hmm. in Japan, and and I reserve copies of games. And the reason I do that is probably you know to to compete with like digital and uh, online and Amazon uh, sales, they offer probably anywhere between eight to 15% off a game. If you just reserve it and you don't have to put any money down, which is really nice. That's wild. Okay. It's really wild. Yeah. So I reserved a copy of final fantasy seven remake. Cause if you can reserve it, but if you don't pick it up, like no harm, no foul, right? No, no money lost. Yeah. No money lost. So I I reserved final fantasy seven and the last of us part two, so you get, you know, you get uh, whatever you're eight to 10% off. And uh, I, I posted this on Twitter. I showed my receipts. They're in Japanese, Japanese though, but it was essentially the price of last of us part two was about $53 and the price. And this is after the eight to 10% off, right? Final fantasy seven okay. was 60. It was like $67, $14 more. Jesus. For Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One, than The Last of Us Part Two. That's that wild. hurts my soul, man. That that, that hurts. is so wild. Yeah, that hurts. Oh, yeah, that's painful. Oh, God, I need a shower now. That's gross. We'll see. Who who knows? Maybe. And I'm praying. I'm praying that game is going to be like twenty hours long at least, and it's enjoyable and it's fully well like built out and it's and it's great and everyone enjoys it and i really do hope that but 
at the same time, like it sort of nags me at the back of my head that that game isn't called Famine Seven Part One. I I think that I think they've got a massive PR um, crisis on their hands, and they they sort of know it. And I think I don't think it'll affect the sales of this um, version whatsoever. But when Famine Seven Part Two comes out, yeah, that's that's what I'm curious to see. I'm I'm worried for them for that, but right, we'll see. But yeah, man, um, we should move on anyway uh, into our main topic. And do you want to do you want to do you want to kick us off, or should I? Uh, sure. Uh, luckily, the mm-hmm. PlayStation Five or Sony did not have a reveal event for the PlayStation Five, so we're able to do this mid mid February. Uh, yeah. We're going to kind of do a uh, a PlayStation Five pre reveal uh, discussion that. We're going to title Dreams, Hopes, and Nopes. So we got yeah. Pie in the Sky, uh, thing, and then Hopes, which would be things that we would like to see that are actually possible or yeah. probably likely. And then Nopes is just what we don't want. Why am I explaining Nopes? We all know what it means. So yeah, Dreams, Hopes, and Nopes. What is a nope? nope? <laughs> what is a nope? Well, I guess we'll find hmm. out. Uh, and question. I guess we're going to go in that order. So uh, yeah. PlayStation 5 dreams well i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna extend this a little bit i am gonna say next gen in general as well because i do want to include xbox in my side of it but i totally understand from your perspective because you live in japan and xbox really isn't that much of a relevancy i guess right like it's yeah not, it's not really a there's, thing there's no there, presence so totally yeah, but yeah. um all right yeah that's fine you can just just add next gen to that in general so what is uh i'll start why don't you start it off what's what what, what is your dreams or what are your dreams for PlayStation 5 and also next gen. Your pie in the sky in a perfect My world. Is... Well, I hope that the money uh, that um the consoles when you turn them on um money prints out. Oh. Yeah. You know from where the the, the CD slot used to be. I I yeah. hope like that's You know, the, we should uh really we My should wife really is just start looking at me like you fucking crazy. <laughs> what are you talking about? We 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 should really start sharing notes cuz you just took mine. I also oh, sorry, want man. I I also wanted to print money. You want a like money I, printing console, yeah. Well, I I my idea was it was going to be like Monster Rancher, like you'd put the disc in, <laughs> and then like just money would come out. It would turn the disc right. into money. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, <laughs> but my uh my first pick, like uh all serious, like all jokes aside, um, I hope. Well, I I dream I dream that all the consoles start opening up a little bit more. And when I say a little bit more, I mean a lot more. And when I say opening up, I mean about their whole libraries, their whole catalogs. Um, we've got some serious like amount of games now with these companies. So we've got Sony that have got five generations of of video games, and sort of a lot of them have closed off like completely. Like they're like you can't you can't play PS2 games on any console now. You can't play PS1 games. Even cut that out since they've um, stopped making the Vita. Uh, PS3 is basically if you don't own a PS3, you can't play PS3 games unless you play on PlayStation Now. Um, it's it's pr- pretty much completely closed off, and the, and Xbox are making sort of waves against this as well. But my Ulma dream is to just like open all of that shit up, and I don't mean just like backwards compatibility. I mean like across the board. Like we need to start having more cross-play stuff so people can actually play every single video game on an Xbox One and play against their PS5. Um, friends, or if if they're playing a PS3 game, they'll be able to play against their their PS5 friends, or like on certain like FIFA games, because you know they're gonna like support them forever until the end of time. Um, I, I, absolutely everything, like t- take that to the next level. So on Xbox, um, what's it called Xbox Series X? Yeah, Xbox yeah. Series X. I hope that they open that up and actually put Steam on that fucking console because they totally could. Like, why not? Oh, okay. Yeah. Put it on there. I mean, they're they're a Windows based system. Um, the the majority of decent games that are coming out on Steam, which are sort of exclusive, quote unquote, to uh, PC at this point, are smaller indie games that could totally run on on Xboxes with a mouse and keyboard. Like, why not? Like, why aren't we opening the doors a lot more? And I really this is this is the biggest dream of mine is just to see absolutely everything open to the point that I can play it. Like, I'd love to be able to boot up my PS5 and be able to go into the like into a menu where it's like, what what games do you want to play? We got PS5, PS4, PS3, PS2, PS1, and then, like I go across and it opens up and like all the UI changes and it's all like PS1 styled. That's that's the ultimate dream. That's what I want. I want I want a black box PS2 
like PlayStation. Like, don't even call it PS5. Just call it the PlayStation, and I can play absolutely everything on it. That's that's the wild dream. Right. Uh, maybe that. Maybe that's like PlayStation Six. Maybe right. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Everyone, it's uh, we always have these ideas when it comes to this sort of stuff where we say, "Oh, that's probably next gen," you know, like, that's probably the next gen. And we always right. say this, and there's constantly things that we're chasing where maybe it won't come until we start like calling calling for this stuff, you know? Like, I uh, why why can't I play PS One games on my PlayStation Four right now? That's ludicrous. Like, it yeah. makes no sense whatsoever. It's absolutely wild, and I really hope. Th- well, I, I dream that 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 all opens up because even though it could do some serious damage, I think like the to the to the industry in some weird ways, I think it's going to lift a lot of developers up as well. So maybe maybe uh, Steam will take a little bit of, bit of a hit, but you know they might they might explode in, in popularity on the Xbox for all we know. You know, like and there's a lot of weird sort of behind the scenes business decisions which this could totally get affected by. But I, you know, this. A game has won it, you know, like this is the biggest dream that everyone wants. Everyone wants to just play any game that they own and play it on any console that they have. And yeah, that's that's my biggest dream. All right. Well, mine was basically, yeah, I'd love the PlayStation 5 to be co- like compatible with everything. Like Pie in the Sky, I have right. a Suikoden 2 on disc mm-hmm. for the PlayStation 1. If I could just put that in my PlayStation 5 and whatever exactly. they need to do like boom yeah um and i could just play it uh and that would be great because uh old games in japan are quite cheap like yeah you can up, get them everywhere yeah dude i, I my copy of suiko then too was a, a, like a dollar it was 108 yen i bought it for how much is that awesome. how much does that game cost in in, in box in in the states uh, uh, it's it's at least one. at least 40 at least yeah so if you got lucky and that would be in bad condition i guess but yeah i would actually like experiment like go to book off and like hmm. like kind of sift through like playstation one games like hey i'll fuck it it's like 200 yen i'll buy it like i didn't i've never played this game i've never seeing it before but if the if it's e- they the ease of which like i could just put it in my playstation 5 and have it work that would be awesome that'd be so cool mm-hmm. um so yeah similar to yours but so i'll i'll add one this is my my dream I hope, no, no, that's not a hope. I dream <laughs> that the PlayStation 5 comes in PlayStation 1 Classic Gray. Oh, God, that would be beautiful. Yeah, I'd Dude, buy that. I would totally the, buy that. Do you remember the 20th anniversary PlayStation 4 console that was yeah, gray? Yeah, and I'm so disgusted with myself that I never bought that. Uh, I should have bought it. Yeah, I should have yeah, bought it. Sam, Just put put I the should've. money down. Yeah. Um. And one cool thing about, like, I have the Pro, and the Pro has, like, a on top it has the PlayStation logo, but it's, like, shiny metallic. This one is so cool, because on the actual controller, the PlayStation 4 20th anniversary console, it has the color logo on the system and on the controller, at, like, the, the PlayStation so cool. button, and it fucking yeah. just pops. Like, that that um, blue, green, uh, yellow, and red uh, PlayStation logo just pops up when contrasted with the gray i would love for that system to be that classic be like bring it back around you know all right i'm i'm going to extend this even further i'm going to oh, i'm going to take yours i'm going to i'm going in even further i hope oh well, no i don't hope i dream i dream yes. that they come out with uh, an array of controllers that you can buy and you can buy like and they're all bluetooth and they're all rechargeable but you can buy a ps1 controller that's bluetooth Ah, uh, kind of, kind of like and the looks, Switch. The Switch has like the Super Nintendo controllers in that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's cool. and you can actually, and they're all wireless and stuff. But you can buy the PS One, the PS Two, the PS Three, and the obviously the DualShock Four is already there. But the, and then you'll have the DualShock Five. But just having them options, like I would totally buy all five of them. I'd be like, yeah, okay, done. That's gold. Like I can throw all the other shit away. This is this is great. Like I don't need a PS Two anymore. I don't need my PS Three anymore. I can get rid of all those. That's what I want. I want the one box. I can play absolutely everything. That is the dream. That, uh, I mean, if everything, if all PlayStation games from one to to five were playable on a single console, that would be cool because it is similar to the Switch, where it's like, okay, we have yeah. uh, the NES Online and the Super NES Online, and if you want through the website, you can buy a NES controller and a Super NES controller just to like get in there 
like mm-hmm. full retro, get that feeling. You you know, I love that stuff. Like I love yeah, taking out cool. all that stuff. I mean, yeah. like I've got I've got a PlayStation One classic. I love it. Like I I, I think it's one of the best uh, classics. Just like post hack, obviously. Like I'm not gonna advocate like the crappy library that it came with because it, it was pretty bad <laughs> right. but the actual console itself and how it feels like the actual build quality of it is awesome like i really really love it i think it's a, by far one of the best ones like in terms of ui as well and stuff like i really really enjoy it i love all them i love all the mini consoles don't get me wrong but yeah having that but sort of up to date and in the in 2020 21st century like that's that's the dream like and i hope i hope i'm i'm hoping right but speaking of hopes no you're dreaming so, you're dreaming now you're now we're yeah, i'm dreaming now i'm hoping um <laughs> i'm gonna pass this off to you because you didn't really get a a, a solid answer because I, I sort of stole it off you i guess but yeah so what what are you hoping for in the next generation um all right i i'll go into my hopes i want to ask you one question how do you feel about the playstation 4 os design mm, it's hit and miss i mean this the same thing always happens every single generation where i loved it when it first came out but then it gets slower and slower and slower because they just keep adding content to it so by the end of the generation it's like this bloated heavy mess of just like content and it's got new features and new services that has to promote so it doesn't really know how to handle all that sort of stuff like if you look at the uh, ps3 um like the ui that was on the ps3 at the start versus the end, like it was just a completely different system. Like it's sort of ridiculous, like how crazy much like it changed, especially in like the storefront, not so much the actual. Oh yeah, yeah the store, the, the PlayStation Three store is hideous. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible ooh. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. But yeah, they, I mean, it changed a lot. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm quite open to change. I guess. Like, what have you got in mind? What what are your hopes? Well, I would like to see something different different with it, but I'm not quite sure what. I just hope they. Uh, they tighten it up a little bit. Um, a couple things. Uh, my hope is I want to see what uh, apps applications are open. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I think it, no, I think it's like point. three at a time. But what happens is like you know if you go to YouTube and it's like okay close. Do you want? Are you sure you want to close game or you're sure you want to close Netflix? It's like oh I didn't right. even know that was open. I wish there was an easy way to know like what applications are open. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Whatever, and like just put that in a folder so I can just go to the folder or like the the main icon uh line where it just shows like your you know like trophies name that type of thing put it in there or let I me didn't customize even think about that. that yeah that's a good point you know I can you know you can customize your your bar on a Mac yeah let me cut let me customize that let me drop be able to drop sh- those types of things in the bar if I want. Just go into yeah, settings. some some good some good like customization options would be really nice because they they do let you like change the wallpaper but past that. You know, like you don't, you get, there's no like sliders or anything where you can like completely change the look of your, your PlayStation, like really like make it your own. Like you've got to either buy a theme or you've got to find the right wallpaper or you've got, to, you know, like they don't, they don't give you enough control sort of thing, even though you spend a lot of time on this thing. That, right. that would be nice to say. Definitely. And I'm not saying they have to go like all my space with it, you know, but like right. some, some <laughs> stuff. Like, the HTML. Yeah. Oh God. My MySpace page is, is hideous. It's so ugly. Yeah. Good times. Um, good times. Uh, able to tweak any uh, application button configuration at the system level. I don't know if that's possible. That is um, possible. They've just recently added that, like that over the past year or something. That's that has been added. Like I'll I'll give them credit where it's due. Uh, okay, so you you might have to walk me through this. I know that I can go into settings and switch button configurations, but what it does is it'll flip the button configurations when I go into like a US application so for example oh okay yeah i know exactly what i mean if okay so in 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 japan uh Mm -hmm. cross is enter and circle is cancel yeah it's the opposite so on the system level that's the system level you 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 Mm -hmm. enter with cross when i go to my youtube application because it's the us one it flips them and so i'm constantly canceling when i don't want to or entering when i don't want to and the same with netflix and every single app is different I wish that I could toggle that stuff like, okay, go into a settings. Okay, for this application, I want the buttons to do this. For this application, I want the buttons to do this. And I would just change everything to cross is enter, circle is cancel. But I can't do that right now. And it drives me nuts. And I yeah, always yeah, screw up. Like guys in problems, right? Like I've got the exact yeah. same thing because I bought my PS4 in Japan. So, so you know, even you, you now... 
even now, like my my store is US, like all the games I play are US, but even still like in the main UI, like it's all circle. And then like you go into an application, then it flips it and you're like, okay, it's it's that. And you accidentally go back or you confirm something by accident. It's just this constant struggle of going back and forth. Yeah, definitely. Like if that's, that should be an option somewhere like it, within the settings where you can just change the configuration of what confirm is across all applications. That would oh. be great. Or what cancel is across all applications. That'd be exactly. Awesome. That'd be a lifesaver. And then my last one is uh, <clears throat> I want to be able to move the application icons around in the, uh, the horizontal line, not just stuff that I've recently played. Uh, I would like to do. Yeah. I, I, I get, I get that. The, the idea is it's showing you what you've recently accessed, but I would just like to be able to toggle that stuff by myself sometimes. Um, that's a silly one. And if that doesn't happen, like, okay, whatever. But yeah, um, I mean, yeah. just simple things though. Like why, why can't, why can't I flip it? So it's like vertical, you know, instead of horizontal stuff or like something that. Like, that. like why isn't there more sort of customization like that? You know, where they just completely change like how the UI is and, and how it, because it's so sort of regimented. It's like, okay, we're going to make a change. And if you don't like it, then screw you, buddy, sort of thing. Like, there's no, like, yeah, there are different themes that change the colors and the way it looks, but it doesn't fundamentally change the UI. Like, if there was more options to that, yeah, I would hope that they would sort of lean into that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is weird. Like, they, they kind of stuck with this horizontal line, and then you just go, like, go up or down, and they've just, like, never gotten away from that. I I don't really know what I want, but there's something a bit clunky about it, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I'm definitely open to change on that, I guess. And, uh, yeah, with all of that, like, sometimes, man, even on the Pro, like, when I'm trying to push down yeah. to go into, like, a folder or go to the store, it's, like, it fucking chugs. Like, yeah, it, just, it takes like, a while to load. Because like, pulling man, stuff in the like internet, hurry yes. up! What the fuck? It's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's really annoying sometimes. Yeah, it's like, like oh, it all it your friends have like played this. this. Hey, the trophies that you've gotten. This is the last time you played the game. This is and it's trying to load all of that shit when you just like hit down. It's like, come on, man! Like you don't need to load all of this. It's, you know, what? it's kind of crazy. It, it's interesting how like they had their giant um, vision of the PlayStation Four. Like we're you know we're gonna integrate like. They're going to try to make it like a Facebook page. And this is like 2013 mindset, yeah, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like share, trending, all this stuff. I don't look at any of that crap. Right. And I, just, I just wish it wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's interesting yeah. that they don't give you the option to turn that stuff off. But at the same time, like I get why they don't is because they're trying to sell you stuff or like inadvertently making you see certain things that you can maybe buy later. You know, that's why, like, they don't take any of that stuff out or give you the option to move it. And that's right. probably why there's not that much customization on the console, purely because they want you to run into that stuff. So you're like, oh, Evan's playing this. Like, maybe I should buy this too. Like, that's the sort of communication that they want with the players. So yeah. I understand why they don't do it. But as players and as users, like, it's extremely frustrating that they don't allow us to have a bit more say in that. But... Who knows? Like maybe they'll change their mind or not. Yeah, there there are people that thought of this and designed it, so they're thinking about these things too. Like, how can we clean this up? How can we make it look better? I just hope Absolutely, that they're yeah. they're they're having those conversations and they're just gonna like just cl just clean all that stuff up a bit and and have it run a bit smoother when you're transitioning from application to application or store back to your 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 home page or dock or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. So all my hopes are at like really small technical stuff. Uh, how about how about you? What are your hopes for next gen and the PlayStation Five? Okay, I only have one hope. Uh, it's, it's sort of a it's sort of a big one. Uh, and yeah, from from the way that it's it's sort of being handled and and how it's up and coming, I, I I'm pretty sure it's it's going to happen. But I'm still I'm still very hopeful that it, it does happen. Uh, and that is Xbox getting back in the game a little bit. Um, I was I was a massive uh, Xbox 360 gamer. Uh, be long before I got my PS3, I uh, had like 50,000 gamer score. Like Xbox players, I'll know what that means. I'm like, oh, okay, that's impressive. It's not, but yeah, I don't, I... that's the deal. Like, I was I was I was I was a massive 360 uh, user, uh, and then I switched over to PS3, and I had a PS4. And but with uh, the new Hellblade getting announced, and with the acquisition of the 10 studios, I really, really hope that Xbox gets back into it a little bit because PlayStation need the competition, if I'm being blunt about it. They've sort of been untethered 
this generation. Like they haven't really had anyone biting at their ankles with anything. Right. And having Xbox there during the PS3 actually elevated their company up way further than anyone actually realizes. Like having The Last of Us, like Naughty Dog probably wouldn't be half the company that it is purely because Xbox 360 were around and doing some serious like dents to them in terms of like sales and exclusives and stuff like that. Right. Just like the Gears of War franchise, Halo and stuff like that. It was doing some, it was really doing them harm, I guess, but. Yeah, competition they, they is, is good for the consumer, you know? Definitely. And uh, and PlayStation really haven't added this generation. I'm, I'm And the flip the flip to that, my fear is that PlayStation are going to be a bit cocky going into the PS5 and they're going to maybe drop the ball again like they did during the PS3 era, uh, era like, like they did with the PS2, you know? Like, I, right. I, I really hope that that doesn't become a thing. So it's it's really just a, a it, it's a combination of being fearful for PlayStation, like being a bit too cocky and also the hope that Xbox get back into the game. And I think they will just purely because of the amount of studios that they bought, like they bought like 10 studios. Hellblade looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, um, it does. They've got plenty of potential, and they could totally do it. So I, they were sorely missed this generation, I think. And not to say that they were doing absolutely terrible, because they didn't. Obviously, um, there are Xbox players out there, but you know, I, I hope that they get back into the game with some more meaningful exclusives. So Sony has some competition, and not just for Sony, just purely because I enjoy the Xbox brand as well. Like I, I think they're actually a decent company, and they could innovate and do a lot of interesting things within their own space, and and sort of push Sony to do the same thing especially with things like streaming and, and just, I don't know. I, I think I'm just super excited about Hellblade too, more than anything, but like, <laughs> I, I hope that game's good. Right. But yeah, I, I mean, they, they had a rough ride at the start of um, the Xbox One generation. Like Don Maverick, he really fucked up the launch, I think. And I think Phil Spencer was sort of thrown this console and this company when it was in its worst moment sort of thing like the they had this console which is always online at the time um it was a hundred dollars more expensive than the the ps4 it was just an absolute shit show they didn't really have any exclusives coming out it was it was just a bad deal that they got and i think phil spencer is the right person to you know have that fresh start and actually go through and and push through and do a, a good job with it so i really hope that they have some decent competition for sony coming up and and sony better stay on their toes because i think I think it's going to happen. And I'm hoping that it happens. So, yeah. But even more so, I like, fuck me, Phil Spencer. Please put Steam on the Xbox. Like, you will destroy the industry <laughs> pretty much. Like, you would do so much damage, and he knows he could. And I hope that it's true. And I, I really, really do hope that comes about. That would be yeah. neat. That is my hope. But how about you, sir? What is your hope? Oh, wait. Oh, you've already my, done your hope. Yeah. You've already done your hopes. Okay. What hope. is your nope? Yeah. Hope. More like nope. Am I right? Yeah. No, right. Uh,. Uh, just this is uh quite quite a small list. Um, recently, PlayStation filed like a pat patent for like basically microtransactions that would help you through a game. Which is like, why don't you just like look for yeah, online always, at like YouTube YouTube videos and and like why why is this a thing? Who would pay for this? They, 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 they want they want they want a piece of that. They want a piece of that pie. It's like, well, what is this Nintendo from 1986? So you call a hotline and and your parents get like a giant <laughs> massive phone bill. Like, this is it's right. so unnecessary. Who would use this? I don't understand it. Uh, the, the the only the thing about it is one, it's dumb, and two, it's like I don't want <laughs> this this idea baked into the concept and design of a into game. games. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. To so, like to yeah. be fair, I think. No, I'm not defending PlayStation's choice in this whatsoever. Like, even putting this through as a pattern is an egregious, um, like travesty upon the games industry, in my opinion. Like, it's it's absolutely horrible. But a lot of patterns are filed and never used. You know, right, right. So that's that might be the good side of it, I guess. And the good thing about this, actually, if you think about it, um, is that if they filed it and they never used it, and they get the pattern, no one else can do it either. So that's there a good go. thing. Right. What was that that's old the, one with? Um... There was a company, I think it might have been the Namco Bandai or Bandai. I already know what you're talking about, which... the loading screen minigame. Yeah, the right? loading screens. No yeah. one could use that. That is wild that they could patent that. Bullshit. Yeah, absolute bullshit. Yeah. And I think it's still I think it's still active because people still aren't using it. I think the best people can do is what um, Call of Duty have just done or started doing is playing all of their cutscenes during the loading screens. 
which is genius because yeah. you go into one cutscene, then when you come out of it, you just straight back into gameplay, and the game just never stops, and it's awesome. Huh. Yeah, bullshit. All right, yeah, and my last one was uh, this just came out. There was a recent poll out by Sony, and this is the same thing, like patent poll. This doesn't mean anything. They're just like testing the waters, putting their yeah, yeah, yeah. putting their feelers out there, and and one of the questions was how do you feel about an always online system? And my answer is no, I don't right. feel at all. No, thank you. Yeah. What is this? Don Mat- Matrick? Actually, I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm going to go back when I edit this. I'm pretty sure you said Don Maverick. That's, Did I? Is it Matrick? I thought I'm going to look this up. That's now. too cool of a name. Don Maverick is too cool. His, I think his name's <laughs> Don Maverick. Sounds like a, sounds like a Top Gun character it is Um, is, you are correct it is Don Matrick all right okay Uh, yeah I was gonna say he that is too cool of a name Don (laughs) Maverick (laughs) um yeah don't do like oh yeah we have a system for that it's called the Xbox 360 like I don't want to I don't want any of that that guy oh that guy yeah and then he left for to become like the CEO of um Zynga Zynga yeah yeah oh I'm not bummed that guy was like you know how like it's nice to have someone who is a bit they seem like who knows who who they actually are, but seeming appro- approachable, charismatic, someone that you can like, I guess, relate to at at some angle, like or, like a Reggie or a Sean Layden or, um, or what was the other guy before? Layden, I don't remember. But uh, Magic, he was such a suit. He was such a suit. Like yeah, man, he was like yeah. in the boardroom every day, sort of thing. Didn't even know what a video game was. You know, it's just polar opposite to um to phil spencer and it's kind of wild that he was ever running xbox division right my mom just texted me and said went to the dmv today to get a driver's license that allows us to fly what does that mean uh i don't think you can do that in a car (laughs) i'm I'm gonna be honest (laughs) sorry i'm pretty sure yeah um no yeah (laughs) always online system no no thank you uh how about you what are your nopes (laughs) Yeah, my uh, nope is I hope that every studio publisher and man and every and all their dogs stop doing this fucking trying to chase this unicorn, which is the Fortnite and, and Minecraft um, model. You know, they're mm. trying to make this quadruple A uh, video game where, you know, people have got 100 million users a month. Stop chasing it. Like that stuff will come when it comes. Like you got to stop pumping out like battle royale game after battle royale game. Like it's you're basically muddy in the waters and you're not really helping anyone. You're just annoying players at this point. So I really hope that that doesn't become like a major focus going. Like I, I hope that isn't a major push going into the next generation. You know, yeah. I hope we don't see uh, when the PS5 gets announced or revealed whenever it does within the next few months. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like within the next month. Uh, when it does, I hope like a line of battle royale games don't like follow with him. Like, oh, we're gonna have this free to play game and this free to play game. Don't care. Right. No one I mean, cares, man. I just think I, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be that, but I think it's gonna be games that like have you know what is that game coming out? Godfall or something. It's I don't know, one of like those the names first that are official, really forgettable. Yeah, the it's first like looter, official slasher shooter. Game. Yeah, I yeah the first and 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 then everyone's just like yeah I don't care and that's the first PS5 game that's ever announced like officially and everyone's just like I don't care like why would I care about that and that's kind of wild that you know a next gen game got announced the first next gen game for the PS5 and everyone's just like yeah I I can't even remember the name of that game properly yeah like spell god god spell or something it's, I I, no I mean I we I've talked about this with like with mcwomble it's like you got you can't use fall anymore you cannot use that at the at the end of your game <laughs> it's it should it should right. be illegal you can't yeah you can't okay shout out to stupid title for a game <laughs> there's a game coming out called daymare like as in night like nightmare but daymare <laughs> that is that is simultaneously great that's, and terrible yeah that's so bad it's good that's like daymare b-tier sort of like old 80s horror movie good you know like yeah. daymare like oh. that's something that we should have grown like grown up with that totally sounds like the name of a straight to vhs horror movie from the 80s that i found at exactly Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really is oh wait I mean, what, what you gotta, gotta think called? of a tagline you know like the the classic like you know in space <laughs> no one can hear you scream type of tagline <laughs> right i yeah. wonder what the tagline is for daymare it's got to be daymare. good we'll, 
Yeah. It's going to be, um, I don't know. You wished you got better sleep last night. Or some, I don't know. It'll be some really stupid. Yeah, some cl- some good stuff. But, uh, we'll th- all right, we'll yeah. Uh, the PlayStation 5. Excited. Happens every yeah, seven I'm years. Yeah, I'm really excited. I yeah. think I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. Um, like I, I was telling you before the uh, show started, the uh, it, it, the fact that Sony isn't going to be at E3 this year, I think they're going to go big or they're going to go home. And I think that their blowout is just going to be something that we haven't seen in a while. I hope anyway. Right. But, their silence is making me believe that like, they're like, we got right. this. Just, just yeah. wait. Once it happens, like you are going to be like, oh, okay, here we go. Now, now we know why Sony was being really, really weird. In yeah, quiet, and they're still like the being weird. Year. They're be, they're being really weird right now. They and are. the thing that make the thing that makes it so weird is that Xbox are just like, here's how this is what our console looks like. This is when it's coming out, and this is the game that we're gonna have on PlayStation. Like, hmm, that's nice. That's 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 wild. You know, the right. fact that they just stayed quiet this whole time. They haven't shown anything in a year. You know, that's 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 absolutely bananas. So yeah, yeah it's they, like they better have something good. It's like we're we're the the reporter and like we're holding the microphone up to to Microsoft and they're like yeah uh, this is what our console looks like and then we like t- turn the microphone to the other side and there's just nobody there like where did right. where's Sony where did they oh, go oh there is someone stood there and they're just nodding <laughs> yeah you know? for like a that's year. what it's like and they're like what the fuck are you doing like wh- yeah. where is this thing you know but at the same time like these consoles are still a while off you know like they're still probably not going to come out until October November maybe September at the, at the very earliest. But, yeah, you know, it's it, there's still a while off, so they've got plenty of time to hype this thing up, whatever it is, whenever it is. But for Christ's sake, I, one thing I do know, it's not going to look anything like the dev kit. Everyone needs to calm down. Like, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not it's not going to look like a jet engine. Like, go look at the PS4 dev kit and look at the PS4. Like, they're, com- they're polar opposites. So they don't look anything like each other. Like, everyone stop freaking out. It's not going to look like the dev kit. You're okay. Yeah, Relax. I mean, I, I don't necessarily care that much about for the form factor because it just kind of sits in the entertainment center but i i really Sam. hope they get away from like the ice cream sandwich and i think someone <laughs> joked on a podcast or like what if they just added That's like great. another like another right. sandwich layer so it's like five four of them. or whatever <laughs> yeah. oh that'd be great like yeah. i'd actually i'd actually get a kick out of that because i don't look at them anyway you know they're just it's fine on the tv somewhere yeah whatever the, the, i mean the but pro I, I do... is actually a pretty cool looking system like it's got the matte finish yeah. it's got the the metallic playstation logo the little um not the little legs but like the rubber stands at the bottom of it are the playstation uh mm. button logos the the triangle the circle the cross and the I lo- square I love, I love little it's so cool like i love yeah. geeking out about that I mean, yeah. when you open up the PS4 and you're replacing the hard drive, it's got a screw in there that's got the four symbols on them. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's Inside it's the console. Neat. like that. I love that stuff. That's great. Oh, uh, USB-C for the control yes. charging, oh, please. please. I was bitching about that the other day because, like, my... Oh, oh, please. That That is the dream. Like, screw everything else that I just said in this episode. Screw <laughs> yeah, that. Just, just give that's me USB-C. All I want. That's, that's all I want. I don't care. Yeah. That's all I want. Oh, we'll see. All right. All right. Exciting but stuff. But yeah, anyway... Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and listening to us uh, ramble on about our hopes and dreams and uh, nopes, I guess, about the next generation. Uh, probably within the next few weeks, we'll probably be discussing this all over again because we would have had a blowout with the PS5. I hope, anyway. Yeah, I want to get I want to get someone on the episode for that just to get like a just an, an yeah, I got a third voice person to yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. No, that would be nice. Um, yeah, please um, comment on the youtube video or uh, tweet us let us know what your hopes dreams and nopes are like i'm sure everyone's got their own crazy preferences but please pie in the sky ideas only like don't don't be tame i know ours were quite tame but go crazy you know do you want an ice cream maker on yours i don't know uh yeah. let us know but um you can find us at coffee beer cast on twitter uh you can also find us on all of the podcast services that you listen to if you can't find us on your podcast service please let us know on twitter and we will add that service to the list because we we sign up for a service and we can just we can just add things to it and it's and it's really really nice uh where can people find you evan uh at the stand user on twitter sifted and giant bomb and how about yourself yep you can find me at hill for games i am on twitter um i occasionally post my finger paintings on there as well if you want to look at some concept art i do that for a living so i sometimes post that stuff But uh, other than that, thank you very much for listening and uh, we will catch you in the next one. So, ta-ta. Sayonara. Bye-bye.
Bye.